Hi, I'm Greg, your car angel. In this video, I want to talk about the problems to look out for when buying a used car from a private party. Buying a car from a private party can save you a lot of money versus buying at the dealership where they have to mark the car up to keep a profit margin. But there are certain things that you really should look out for when buying a car from a private party. And in this video, I'm going to be giving you 10 things to look out for so that you don't get caught buying a bad car. The very first thing that you should be looking out for when buying a car from a private party is whether you're dealing with a curb stoner. Now, a curb stoner is someone who's in the business of flipping cars without putting the car in their name. Hey, how y'all doing? Y'all looking for a new car today? <laughs> now, that is a problem because in that case, you are not dealing with the person that you think you're dealing with. Maybe they picked the car up from an auction and it had some problems and they, they fixed it, but they never put the car in their name and they're acting like they are Fred Jones or whoever is on the title. And the problem is Fred Jones doesn't know that someone else is selling his car with his name and you don't know who's selling the car thinking that it's Fred Jones when it's really not. So bad problem and there's an easy way to know whether you're dealing with a curb stoner. Now curb stoners are notorious for hiding their tracks from the authorities. Anybody can track a car by an ad by looking at the license plate. That is the way that authorities can find out the movement of any car. Now, if a curb stoner wants to hide that, they're simply going to hide the license plate. So that is the proverbial sign that you're dealing with a curb stoner is if the license plates are fuzzed out, they're blurred. You see all this all the time. This is just classic curb stoning behavior. And when you're searching for a car online, personally, I just don't even respond to ads that don't show the license plate. Another classic trick that curb stoners like to employ would be to meet you instead of at their house, to meet you at some remote location like, I don't know, a Target parking lot or some other obscure location where they can do their business. And then after all is said and done, they disappear and you have no idea if they were the actual owners. Now again, comes back down to the title. And if you're to meet them at their house, then the title will have an address on it. And of course, if you're at that address, that's a good sign. Look at the car history report and see if there are multiple owners within the last year of ownership. You wanna see just one, right? You wanna see just one owner, hopefully for many, many years, including all the service records that are in the name of the person who's selling the car. But you want to make sure that the car was not flipped several times or hot potatoed between several owners, meaning that, you know, why would somebody only own a car for just a couple of months and then sell it if there wasn't a problem? So that's clearly a red flag. There are some key things that need to be inspected and they're very easy to see if there was a problem. And the first thing you're gonna look at are the fender flare bolts. These are the bolts that run along the side of the engine bay. Now these bolts should be fresh and looking factory. In other words, there should be factory paint with no silhouettes underneath the bolts and definitely no witness marks or tampering marks with uh, the tools on the bolt itself. Now those same witness marks should be looked at on the hinge bolts for the hood. These bolts are also, if the car was in an accident, going to be removed and they're gonna be replaced. And that is what you wanna make sure that that never happened. And the reason that these bolts are so important is because this is the front of the car. This is where all the money is. This, you got the suspension, you got the alignment, you got the cooling system, you got the engine itself, you got the sensors, you got the airbags, you got everything in the front of the car. And if that was ever compromised, 
it's never going to be the same, never. And so you want to make sure that that car that you're about to buy has never been in a front end accident. Now also on the hood of the car, there's going to be a small sticker um, that's going to show the vehicle identification number. That's the VIN sticker. Now there's going to be VIN stickers all around the car. You're going to have one on each door. You're going to have one on the hatch panel. You're going to have one on the hood. You're going to have one on each of the fenders on the inside of where the fender flare bolts are. And this number has to coincide with all of the other numbers that are on the car. So you want to check each one of those numbers to make sure that they are all the same number. Now that number also will be on the title of the car. So if the, any number on the car is not synchronizing with the number that's on the title, then you are looking at a car that's clearly been mucked with. The next problem that you're looking out for would be evident on a brake pedal inspection. Now, if you look at a brake pedal and it looks like this, and the wear is always on the bottom right-hand corner of the brake pedal. If you see this, this is indicative of a car that was city driven. It has a lot of brake sequences, and that means that it also had a lot of cold starts and a lot of cold transmission shifts, and that is not good for the car. There's going to be a lot of wear and tear on all of the components, especially the expensive ones. So what you're looking for is a car that has had a lot of highway miles, and the way that you know that is by the brake pedal having virtually no wear on it. The next thing that you want to look for is by opening up the hood and looking at the colors of the fluids. Having fluids that are dark in color carbonized would be a very bad sign. Now, every reservoir that you have on a car will have a certain color. For instance, your brake fluid is always going to be a clear amber fluid. Your transmission and your power steering fluids are traditionally bright pink, and your radiator fluid is going to be either a pink, green, or a kind of bright orange, depending on which manufacturer it is. So all of these colors should look fresh, and the oil, of course, should be clear, and the dipstick should be nice and shiny with no shellacking on the end. So you want to look for clear fluids all around. Shellacking is a term that I use to describe discoloration of a dipstick. Now, what this actually is, is the oxidized uh, molecules of the oil attaching themselves to the dipstick over time. And this is usually due to a lack of uh, regular oil changes or a consistent low oil level, both of which are not good. And the next area to look at is on the oil filler cap. You want to open that up and you want to see a clean oil filler cap. If it is carbonized, and especially if it's heavily carbonized, that is an indication that the oil was consistently dirty in the crankcase, and that is not a good sign either. If you see quarts of oil stored in the trunk or the hatch of the car, that is clearly a sign that there's something wrong. There's oil consumption going on, um, or major oil leaks for that matter. So be careful about what you see in the trunk. The final thing that you want to make sure of is that the car has not been repainted in any way. Now, I walk through a full inspection with you at carbuyingsupport.com, but in short, if you're going to look at a car and you're seeing the car, you want to make sure that every part of the car has the same color from the bumper to bumper. You want to see a uniform quality of color. If you see a differentiation between the bumper and the fender or one door to the next, then you're looking at a car that's been repainted. Now, 
if the owner is telling you exactly why that happened and it's a okay story for instance you know i don't know somebody scraped it in a parking lot with a grocery cart that's one thing but if the whole car was sideswiped and you know given a cheap paint job well you want to know that so look out for any color differences all around the car so those are the quick 10 problems to look out for when buying a used car from a private party if you have your own ideas i'd love to see your comments below i do read all of those i'm greg your car angel thanks so much for watching the video give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to the channel i'll see you in the next video take care